Everyone knows PHP as the language that powers most of the web, but lots of people do not know how it looks like today in 2022. For a long time, PHP has been treated as a language for kids, something you would start with, learn programming a little bit with it, and then move on to a real language like Ruby or Python or Java, something like that, a real language. Now, it is true that PHP kind of asked for it, uh, it did deserve this reputation for a while, but the thing is, old PHP looks like this. And modern PHP looks like this. Now, the thing is, most people who are not working with PHP today imagine PHP as what it was 10 years ago. When I speak to friends who work with other languages like Ruby or JavaScript, uh, they're, they're usually astonished to, to find out what PHP looks like today. Uh, it's completely different to what they've seen the last time they've worked with it. I mean, most people do not know that PHP has frameworks like Symfony and Laravel, which are super powerful and easily comparable to uh, the major frameworks or the major web frameworks in other languages like Ruby's uh, Rails and Python's Django, or, you know, JavaScript, I don't know, Adonis, which is loosely based on Laravel. Now, I think it's interesting to talk about how PHP got itself in the situation. And for that, we need to go a little bit back and talk about how PHP was created. It was first uh, a collection of Perl scripts. So it wasn't a proper language. It wasn't designed to be a language. And it kind of just evolved from there and new stuff was being added. And unlike Ruby or Python, which were languages that were always meant to be languages, PHP was kind of like this Frankenstein that worked. And I think that's the reason why PHP had such a bad reputation. PHP is probably the web language with uh, the lowest entry barrier. If you go back to 2008, 2010, you might remember hosting providers that you could sign up for in a couple clicks and then you would get access to a cPanel or something like that. And then you could just FTP into your server, drag your files over, and your site would go live. You didn't have to SSH into a server. You didn't have to set up anything. It was literally just dragging and dropping some files and you could see your site updated in real time. In 2008, when I was 10 years old, I was making some, some really simple websites and working with platforms like PHPBB and Envision Power Board. And let me tell you, um, I didn't speak English back then. I was a 10 year old kid and I wasn't a genius. So if I had to SSH into a server, install Nginx, install Passenger, install MySQL, uh, follow the file somehow, I don't think we had Git back then. So probably using something like SVN, I, I wouldn't do it because I wouldn't know how to do it. Even if I were to you know, read some guides, I probably wouldn't even get to the guide. Now, with PHP, it was super simple. I could just open up FileZilla, FTP into my server using the credentials the hosting provider gave me and literally drag my files over to the server and my, web, my website would be live. That's, that's pretty much it. Now, the thing is with great response, I mean, with great power comes great responsibility. Why do I think it is awesome for a language to have such accessibility, uh, such a low entry barrier? It does come with downsides. Um, first, you're, you're going to serve lots of people. So it's easy to understand why PHP became so popular. If more people use something, you're bound to have more bad code laying around the internet. What I mean with this is, let, let's think of Ruby. You cannot simply write a Ruby script, drag it over to a server and have it work. You need to go through the command line. You're probably going to use something like Rails or Sinatra. So you need to have more experience or more abilities than what is needed to get PHP scripts to go live. Back then, when I was 10 years old, if I wanted to test my PHP website, I could just download something like WAMP, which included PHP, MySQL, and I think that was it, Apache maybe. And it would, you know, start the server for me, show the pages, I could just drag stuff and it would work. Now, if I wanted to try Rails, I would have to dabble with the command line, I would have to download packages, I would have to install Ruby, I would have to install Rails. It was too complicated for a 10 year old kid. 
especially one who didn't speak English. So I think the low entry barrier is a great thing, but I think we need to understand that when it's easier to get something done, you're bound to have more, um, I was going to say bad code or bad stuff in it, but I'm going to say unexperienced people working on it or working with it. Another factor is since PHP wasn't exactly designed and it served over half the web, this is just my guess, but it was probably really, really hard for the PHP core team to make changes that were backwards compatible. So it didn't break anyone's websites while making the language go into the proper direction. Think about it. We have folks running WordPress on PHP 5.5 or 5.6. And we also have folks running code bases from PHP 5.4 on PHP 8 and it works. So of course we had some deprecations, we had some things removed from the language, but overall it was manageable. People could actually upgrade their apps and usually didn't require a lot of work. So uh, this is just my guess, but uh, I think it's plausible that the core team wasn't able to just make all of the changes they wanted. I coded a bit between 2008 and 2011 or so, and then I kind of stopped. And on my last year of high school, 2015, I came back to it and I actually started learning Rails. So when I came back to web development, uh, Rails was what I was learning and I really, really enjoyed it. And then I found out PHP was so a thing and it was so big and it was completely different to, to what I was doing uh, five years prior to that. It was completely revamped. Uh, we had PHP 7. It was either being released or it was just released. And it was like a totally different language for me, especially because when I was coding back 2008, 2010, I was using old stuff like the old MySQI query API. I wasn't using PDO. I didn't know object-oriented programming, none of that stuff. So it seemed like a new language to me. And the thing is, most people who are not in the PHP circle think of PHP as the language that I was coding with in 2010, not the language that exists now or the language that existed when I rejoined uh, web development in 2015. Right now, we have several amazing tools at our disposal, and uh, I'll have to mention the two biggest frameworks, uh, Symfony and Laravel, which are super powerful and easily comparable to any other framework in any other language. The language has evolved a lot um, thanks to the core team and to lots of contributors. And uh, right now it is a language with traits, with generators, with name arguments, with short closures, and so many more things that, that make it really robust. And um, honestly, there isn't much that I can complain about it. There are some things that I did not really enjoy about PHP. Uh, one of them being you have to open the PHP tag on each file. Uh, the standard library is very inconsistent. And uh, I think that goes back to what I said about having to maintain backwards compatibility. Um, we have a really inconsistent standard library, but I, I particularly do not know how to fix it. I, I cannot think of a fix since it would break lots of apps, but that's one of the things I dislike. But right now, even though I work with other languages, I work constantly with JavaScript. I have some experience with Ruby. I do like the direction PHP is going and what how it's been going for the past five or six years. Um, the core team takes great decisions. We have a great ecosystem. And that that's one of the things that I think uh, waiting a lot. When I talk to friends who work with other languages, Rust, Elixir, JavaScript, whatever. Uh, they usually do not know that we have so many amazing tools at our disposal. Uh, things that go from dashboards to monitor your queues to uh, server deploying um, or better server provisioning to serverless. We have all kinds of things in both the Laravel as well as the Symfony as well as the PHP ecosystem. So it's hard to say that PHP is not suited for web development in 2022 or that it is not uh, a good option for enterprise grade applications because that's simply not true. The language is really, really good as it is right now and it's bound to get better. Now, what is the point of this video? Um, to be honest, I don't know. I think that for folks who are in the PHP community, it is to appreciate what we have right now and 
kind of look at where PHP came from and how the journey was made, and also um, understand that we that PHP is a powerful language with a powerful ecosystem. And for folks who are not in the PHP community, I think it is to uh, learn and and see how PHP looks like today. It's always fun, really, when I talk to friends in other languages and uh, I show them what we have in the PHP community, and they usually really enjoy it. Some of them do not like PHP syntax. I I don't really like it to be honest, but um, they usually really enjoy the functionalities and tools that we have at our disposal. So, um, like I said, I think the easiness of use in PHP was both a good thing and a bad thing in the sense that it might have made things harder in the long term. But I think PHP is in a great position right now and has a clear direction, especially with the creation of the PHP Foundation to fund PHP core development. So yeah, um, if, you, if you don't know how PHP looks like today, I highly suggest that you take a look at it. Um, I'm going to leave a few videos on the description about the current state of PHP. And if you are in the PHP community, um, let's just appreciate everything that's been done in the last few years. And we have way too many people for me to mention here, but uh, all the folks at Symfony at Laravel, the contributors, to uh, the PHP core, the PHP league. Um, there are just too many people to mention, but uh, that's one of the things that I really enjoy about PHP. The community is very tight and yeah, I guess I don't have much more to say. But anyway, I think it's just interesting to go back a little bit and see how things were done and how they are done right now. And to be honest, I still think PHP is probably the easiest language to deploy sites with. Uh, of course, dragging files over FileZilla is not acceptable anymore, but you can still write a PHP file and run it using PHP's local server. Meanwhile, if you had something like Rails or Flask or anything like that, you, you, you have a little bit more setup. So PHP is really easy to get into. And I think that's a major uh, plus in for the language. But anyway, for those who think PHP is dead, I don't think that's true. I remember people saying the same about Ruby a couple years back and it was totally false. So yeah, I'm going to end the video now. Um, thank you for watching. And uh, I'm going to come back to this video in a couple of years to, to see if I was right. See you later. Bye-bye.